My topic is really to focus on clinical trial data. I will not touch on resistance because Carlo will speak about that, clinical implications as Jonathan after that. So I will just show the, uh, I don't know how, okay. So <clears throat> show you studies uh, and show you results from comparative studies. Uh, and preferentially focusing on randomized clinical trials. So I will not focus on, I will not touch for the sake of time and also for the level of evidence on, on uncontrolled studies, so prospective cohorts without a control group. And we'll preferentially show RCTs, but show also some comparative observational studies, although we should be aware of the bias of uh, intrinsic in this type of uh, analysis. So. I started, you can't see that, but just to tell you, this is a review we recently published on, on uh, clinical trials on two drug regimens. And out of this, um, we made a table of, of the available studies. There are 11 studies, which include also um, uncontrolled studies, but those who are controlled are uh, on the left. And of these, the most important results uh, and more positive results in the naive patients with two drug regimens as compared to three drug regimens are those from the NEAT and from the Gardel trial. The NEAT trial, <coughs> you know, is a, is a European consortium, and this study was comparing in naive patients uh, Darunavir plus Raltegravir with Darunavir plus uh, Truvada, actually. And this was. Uh, showing a non-inferiority of, of this dual regimen as compared to the tribal regimen, but look here, if you uh, selected the patients just with starting with less than 200 CD4 counts, as we heard this morning, or those with uh, viral load higher than 100,000, then dual therapy was inferior to tribal therapy. And the other study we have with non-inferiority of a dual therapy as compared to a tribal therapy in naive patients is the Gardel trial who compared Calitra 3TC with Calitra plus two nukes. But the problem with this study is that, very nicely done, but uh, the, the, the regimen is old, so and we don't use Calitra anymore in our clinical practice. So you have very few evidence in naive patients. Another study which is currently, uh, has has recently been uh, um, presented is the, at Croy. It's the Andes, another South American study with all these nice names, which was comparing in naive patients Darunavir at this time plus 3TC as compared to Darunavir plus plus Truvada. This is a small study because if you see, there are just 145 patients, which is not really a huge power. But at the 48 weeks endpoint, actually, both arms went equally well. So interesting results. Uh, no significant differences in adverse events leading to discontinuations in both arms. And the dual therapy arms tended to go a little bit worse in terms of blood lipids as compared to the other ones, probably because the tribal therapy arm has the tenofovir effect on lipids, which we know is, well, very well described. Uh, this is the table of the trials in virologically suppressed patients. So if we exclude the, um, the observational or uncontrolled studies, uh, we have more studies as compared to the naive patients. And I show you sh just a selection of these. First of all, we have a good number of studies uh, analyzing the efficacy and, and safety of in, in, in a switch therapy, so I can, these are biologically suppressed patients, of Darunavir plus 3TC as compared to Darunavir plus continuing Darunavir plus 2 nukes. In this case, patients were already on a Darunavir-based regimen, so they had to continue or to switch to Darunavir 3TC. And um, actually, the results show non-inferiority of, of the dual therapy. At 89% virological suppression at one year as compared to 93%. Although you see the treatment difference is a little bit in favor of the tribal therapy and the lower inf non inferiority margin is already almost touched because it was set at 12% and, and it was 11%. So it was, it was non inferior but barely non inferior. Mm. 
And uh, interesting to see the, the meta-analysis of also, uh, the meta-analysis of all clinical trials in suppressed patients comparing a boosted PIS plus 3TC to the corresponding boosted PIS plus two nukes that the Spanish and the Italian did, because all these studies are Spanish or Italian, actually. And, and they used here for this analysis as endpoint, a different one, they used the, the, the FDA and a uh, new FDA endpoint that is the proportion with virological um, failure at one year. And, and, and they show by pooling, we show actually, that, that by pooling the results of these four trials, which include Atazanavir 3 tc the first two, uh, Darunavir 3 tc the third, and, and Lopinavir 3 tc the fourth, uh, we show that there is non-inferiority of the dual therapy as compared to the, to the triple therapy when pooling all these together. And also in, in selecting subgroups, females or HCV positive or type of, of boosted PI uh, used, we, we also, uh, you always obtain this, uh, this non-inferiority. The other endpoint, which is the classical endpoint, that is the proportion with virological success and not failure. In all cases, you retain the margin at 12%. The pooled analysis, you see, has a trend towards a better efficacy uh, of the dual therapy in this case. And, and so also the pooled analysis showed uh, that <clears throat> with dual therapies, you have an increased cholesterol as compared to tribal therapy. Uh, which is confirmed for the LDL cholesterol, but not for the HDL cholesterol. Triglyceride rates are a little bit higher with dual therapy. And uh, as expected, the GFR, so the renal function, is improved with, uh, uh, with uh, dual therapy as compared to the tribal therapy. And this has mostly to do with the fact that the tribal therapy group had tenofovir, uh, Disoproxyl fumarate, so the old formulation of tenofovir. Uh, finally, resistance at failure, very few seen in these trials that pulled together bring about 1,000 patients. Uh, and uh, the only resistance seen are with tribal therapy, just one case with dual therapy, and this was in the Lopinavir 3TC trial. So <laughs> the other large study in this setting of virologically suppressed patient is, is a SWORD. Uh, it's two studies combined together. All together they make 1,000 patients and more. So very large. And in this case, uh, the design is a little bit different because these patients uh, are on tribal therapy. They are virologically suppressed for one year, but they have two, uh, their therapy can be uh, different. Uh, they have, can be on two nukes plus an integrase inhibitor, or a non-nuke, and 50% were on a non-nuke or a PI. And they either continue their ongoing therapy, with whom they did not have big problems, they did not have um, side effects, most of them, or they switch to dolutegravir-pivirin, and after one year, everybody switched to this dual combination. Uh, we know the results. The <coughs> non-inferiority is very well established of this, of this uh, uh, regimen. So the efficacy is similar. Resistance, we have, they have one resistance mutation in the dolutegravir pivirin arm, which I think, and no resistance mutation in the tribal therapy arm, which is, well, out of 500 patients and 500 similar, I would say. But <coughs> bone saf safety, so bone uh, mineral density is improved with darunavir, with dolutegravir, with pivirin, as compared to continued tri previous tri pr tribal therapy. Renal is similar, similar lipids and other markers are similar. There is so patient reported outcomes, very small improvements in patient satisfaction with dolutegravir and pivirin. There is a higher rate of neuropsychiatric side effects with uh, with um, with dolutegravir and and pivirin. And uh, so <clears throat> you see that most of these psychiatric adverse events were grade one and two, so mild to moderate. And in nine cases, they led to 
uh, treatment discontinuation. Uh, this was for anxiety or depression or insomnia or headache or, or other types. And this was, uh, the trend was similar either of the presence of these adverse events or of the discontinuation due to adverse events was constantly higher in the, in the dolutegavir repivirin arm of the study. Uh, so another trial um, is uh, of the, the ASPI, which is, was a small proof of concept, but randomized controlled study uh, of biologically suppressed patients switching to uh, dolutegavir 3TC or continuing three drug therapy. Uh, 90 patients overall, uh, so 45 per arm, and you see there is similar outcome. And we, this led to uh, the possibility of continuing with this strategy and 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 uh, starting the the phase three uh, trial, which is currently enrolling and ongoing. Uh, another dual therapy uh, versus tribal therapy. Uh, study is the LATTE two study, which is a um, the phase two B study on uh, on the injectable cabotegravir plus uh, rilpivirin as compared to a um, tribal therapy, which is was all oral with cabotegravir oral and and abacavir three TC, a and you see similar results of virological uh, success uh, at one year. And this led to the continuation in several trials of this strategy of injectables, and we were, we are waiting for for the results. But it's interesting also to see in a different setting not only the virologically suppressed patients, but those who fail. And in this case, you see this is a trial performed in, in mostly in developing countries. The earnest, which was comparing in the second line, so these are patients failing the first line of two nukes plus a non-nuke, and they are randomized to either do monotherapy with, uh, with lopinavir, which went worse, or uh, two nukes plus PI, which is a current standard second line therapy in, in, in developing countries, or uh, boosted PIs, in this case, lopinavir uh, plus, uh, plus raltegravir, thinking that giving a new class to these patients would have been of benefit. This was not of benefit, but on the contrary, at three years, the two drug regimens was inferior as compared to the tri tribal regimen, despite extensive resistance to the nucleoside backbone uh, in, in, in the tribal therapy arm. So it's not non-inferior. And finally, I would end with the uh, some data from the real world. This is our observational study. This is a cohort. The VAH is a cohort, a Spanish cohort, very vast, which compared the outcomes in the clinical practice of, of um, three drug regimens, uh, which were um, based on integrase inhibitors, with, with two drug regimens based on integrase inhibitors. Um, so you see how the types of regimens used in the, in the dual therapy, most of them were, uh, sorry, in the dual therapy arm, there was also a group based on PIs plus 3TC and not on integrase plus 3TC. So the, the largest group indeed for us with, uh, with a PI and 3TC, and there is also a vast group doing uh, an integrase inhibitor plus the protease uh, inhibitor. Um, the result is that the persistence of this regimen, uh, their regimens, was, uh, was longer when doing tribal therapy as compared to dual therapy. So the risk of discontinuations was about 30% higher with uh, dual therapy. And also when uh, making a subset analysis on the dolutegravir regimens, the risk was about 49% higher as compared to the tribal therapy. Uh, again, this was a time to virological failure, which was uh, longer with tribal therapy as compared to dual therapy. So, and the risk of virological failure with dual therapy in this uh, observational study was two fold higher as compared to tribal therapy, uh, with no differences in toxicity or adverse events uh, observed in the two groups although this is less sensitive considering the fact that this is an observational uh, study. So finally, uh, what is 
advantages and limitations of two versus three. So we, we, we have data showing non-inferiority of several two-drug combinations as compared to three drugs, particularly in, in the switch setting, virological suppressed patients. Still, in clinical practice, we see more virological failure as compared to uh, in two as compared to three. We have to understand better whether this depends on reg regimen type, whether in clinical practice we have more patients with previous virological failure, which, uh, which um, reduce the efficacy of this dual regimen, or whether there are other types of biases. Uh, there is a evidence of improved bone mineral density with several dual regimen. In particular, it's shown with atazanamide 3 tc uh, and uh, versus atazanavir plus Unux or dolutegravir, repivirin versus other triple therapies, there is an improvement in renal function in, in boost with boosted PI plus 3TC as compared to boosted PI plus Tunux. And tenofovir interruption leads to increased lipids in, this, in these studies, which is similar as compared to the studies showing, uh, analyzing the switch from from TDF to, to, to TAF, which also show improved lipids. So um, in, in some of these, when the switch is uh, associated to a drug change, so in a patient which is well, if you change the drug, this is subject to more side effects. So uh, this is what happens also, happen in the SWORD, for example, no? uh, and, and did not happen in the PI plus 3TC studies because these patients were continuing their previous therapy and just discontinuing one drug. So the most studies on dual therapy con are made on PIs, which are sometimes obsolete, and we know the limitations of, of PIs, side effects and boosting and so on. And there is still no comparison of dual regimen with a triple regimen which contains TAF instead of TDF. It is ongoing, but still we don't have the, the, re the, um, the results, and so it's finished. Thank you.